Alaska. In winter, a million and a half square kilometers of frozen wilderness. Alaska is a very dangerous place. You get off the beaten path up here, and it could be your life. It's the perfect place to hide if you're running from the law. They think Alaska is so big and so remote that they can come up here and nobody can find them. Hundreds of fugitives a year hide out in Alaska, thinking they can escape justice. They're sex offenders, they're rapists, murderers, they're drug dealers. U.S. Marshals, get out of the car now! But only a dozen federal agents are here to track them down. Put your hands out the window! But they are the toughest of the tough. Bad choice to run from the marshals, buddy. Out here in the Alaskan frontier, we will chase these people to the end of the earth. Come to the door now and open it! We'll go out by boat in the summer, snow machine in the winter. We have our own plane. No matter how you get there, we can get there, too. U.S. Marshals, get down on the ground! They are the Alaska Marshals. U.S. Marshals, get out of the car now! A different breed of criminal requires a different breed of law enforcement officer. December. For the Marshals, this is fugitive season. U.S. Marshals, don't move. On the ground, now! 20 hours a day of darkness and temperatures well below zero. It's about 20 below. Definitely not going to be like sleeping at home. It's the time of year that fugitives on the run hunker down and hide. We got on a fishing boat down in Seattle, and he's definitely a runner. It's when the marshals take the fight to them. As rivers and lakes freeze, they gain access to the furthest reaches of the state. Hey, hey, that's him, Randy. Let's go. You know what they say about the marshals? We always get our man. Today, the marshals are heading to the remote village of Bethel, 550 kilometers west of Anchorage. With no roads in or out, Bethel is a no man's land in Alaska serving as a desolate outpost for the 56 smaller villages surrounding it. We just landed in Bethel, and uh, as usual, it's snowing. <laughs> Rochelle LeDyke has been with the Marshals for 16 years, along with Deputy Marshal Sonny Connell. They're searching for a dangerous fugitive. There's our right. They're after 29-year-old convicted sex offender Brian LaRoe, hiding in a village somewhere in western Alaska. He's a potentially armed suspect who has allegedly threatened to kill cops with a high-power AR-15 assault rifle. Right now we're walking into the Alaska State Troopers post. We got one snow machine out here outside. We'll have to get ready for the trip. Due to the small size of the force, the marshals rely on the troopers and local police for support. This is a vast area of dangers. As you can get off on the wrong branch and go the wrong direction, we could end up way out here in, in um, more dangerous territory. I'm ready to rock and roll on a snow machine. Alaska in winter is one of the most extreme environments in the marshal service. Massive fugitive counts, less than four hours of daylight, and temperatures that can plummet to negative 55 degrees Celsius. Let's do it! Out here in the Alaskan frontier, it's not the typical road systems. You have to use snow machines and go out on rivers that are frozen over. We've got weather conditions that can come out of nowhere, dropping way below zero. We've got large animals there. We're not at the top of the food chain. You've got bears, you've got moose, all sorts of things out there that are threats to us aside from the fugitives. Fugitives run to Alaska, think they can hide out up here in the wilderness. But you can only go so far until the extreme weather conditions will get you. As most of the U.S. Marshals will tell you, we will chase these people to the end of the earth. While the long pursuit for Brian LaRoe continues, the Fugitive Task Force in Anchorage begins their next case. All right, here we are for Bobby Dwayne Thompson. Dope was his last federal conviction. 
Bobby Thompson is a 38-year-old convicted drug dealer who's been known to carry a gun. He's wanted on charges related to a drug conviction, and the marshals want him off the streets. We got any source information? He's still driving the white Yukon. He's the vehicle was spotted this morning. According to a tip, Thompson's traveling in a white four-wheel drive vehicle that was spotted at a local hotel. We're going to set up in the parking lot surrounding it. We're going to wait until all the people are in the vehicle, and then we'll do a pinch in the parking lot. Any questions? All right, let's mount up and go. This is the fun part. The investigation kind of drags on. You get bored, you get frustrated, you get disappointed. But when it actually comes to the hit and the arrest, that's what we all live for. This guy's armed and dangerous. Bobby's got a proven history of it. Kevin Gwynn is the lead investigator on the Thompson case. He's been a marshal for over 23 years. Riding shotgun is rookie marshal Tana Kirkwright. We can assume Bobby is going to be hostile. We can assume Bobby is going to be armed. So the whole objective is to hit hard and fast. Bobby has been through this game a lot of times. Gwen and Kurt Wright are the first to arrive at the hotel. Isn't that our Yukon over there? We've got the car. We've got the Yukon. Copy, Dave. Can you see it at all? Oh, I can see the front end of it. You can just see the just the white of it. They set up surveillance across the parking lot and wait for the others to arrive. He's leaving. He's pulling out. Who is? He's out. Our guy. Target's moving. He's coming out. Okay, he's just coming out, signaling for a left turn. He is going to be going eastbound on Spinard. I could not see who's occupying. Whoever's driving, standing on the gas. Jeff, you're going to have the eyeball in about 10 seconds. Jeff and I think it's, it's Bobby Cusino. They might be picking him up, though. He went in around right here, just hooked around the corner there. The Yukon pulls into the parking lot of a second hotel. And this is not the kind of thing we want to do in a crowded parking lot. But in the end, it's the bad guy's decision. We spend a lot of time reacting to what the bad guy does. We actually have the target vehicle in sight right now. We follow it from one hotel to another. The marshals take up four tactical positions around the hotel and suspect vehicle. When Thompson comes out, they'll swarm his car, cutting off his chances to run, or, if he has a gun, to start shooting. I am directly across the street looking at this vehicle. I will be able to tell if he gets in it. And if he does, we need to block him in right here. Now, the white Yukon is parked directly behind the hotel right now that we have information that he may be in. David Long is the task force commander. A 20-year veteran of the marshals, he's made every kind of tactical takedown. That vehicle is tied to Bobby. We're watching to see if he'll come out the back door of this hotel. Everybody's getting ready. Everybody's taking a deep breath. Any takedown that you do like this, you got to do it hard and fast. Speed, shock, and surprise. That way nobody gets hurt. But in reality, it takes one monkey wrench, a car stopping in front of you. You know, maybe you slip on the ice. That gives them enough time to go for a weapon or to make their escape. We're going to start moving as soon as we see him. Bro. You're going to pull in right behind him, start to take down right there, and then everybody else fill in behind him. Approaching any vehicle poses the greatest threat to law enforcement. April 22, 2011, Toma, Wisconsin. Officers are after 28-year-old shooting suspect Seth McCloskey. After a high-speed pursuit, McCloskey pulls over. What happens next is law enforcement's worst nightmare. Officers have little chance to react. In the barrage, Officer Josh Kenworthy is wounded. The 
the marshals, the risk is losing the element of surprise, giving Thompson a chance to exit his truck shooting. One passenger in the back seat as well. Get your hands up! Keep your hands where I can oh. see them. Turn around, face the front of the car. Okay, front seat looks clear. You got a gun? Let's impound this and get a search warrant. Apparently, they found a uh, weapon of some kind in the vehicle. So uh, we got four occupants in there. Get an ID everybody. They'll uh, start interviewing people and find out who they are. We're running this guy for warrants right here. This is not the guy we thought we were looking for here. Kevin, damn it, this is not him. I know him. Can't remember his name. Although he was traveling in the suspect vehicle and fit Thompson's description, it's the wrong guy, but one that Deputy Gwynn recognizes. Do I know you, big guy? Do I know you? I think you do. What's your name? I'm with the U.S. Marshals. I'm Deputy Gwynn. You and I have had some conversations sometime in the past. No? All right. Well, unfortunately, this wasn't Bobby. We're pretty disappointed about it. We knew that he was using this vehicle. Uh, we had information that he was in the hotel. We see a guy that come out to get into the vehicle that matches his basic description. We believed it was him. We pinched the car here in the parking lot. Turned out not to be Bobby, but he was a former felon that we all know. But Intel says that uh, he may still be in the hotel, and we're trying to generate more to find specific rooms. Let's go talk to the manager. You want to cover him? Go talk to the manager. You guys got a picture? OK. Kevin just got some last minute information here that there are two rooms associated with the uh, suspect, with Bobby Thompson. So we're going to get entry and search those rooms. Searching for a potentially armed suspect in an unfamiliar building is one of the most dangerous things a cop can do. Worse yet, there's a lot of guns in Alaska, and it's the state with the most per capita gun deaths per year. When you go up to a door in a hotel, you never know who's going to answer. You never know who's going to come out the doors in front of you, behind you, up the hall, down the hall. Bobby Thompson! Danger's everywhere, so you got to stay alert. In Alaska, you figure everybody has a gun. Under the door now and open it. Back, 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 back. Down on knees, down on knees. U.S. Marshals, step out now. Back, back, down on knees. Come out the door. Police, U.S. Marshals, you're down here. Let's see your hands. Bobby. U.S. Marshals, come to the door. Police. He's on foot. He's on foot somewhere five minutes ago. Before the marshals could lock down the hotel, Bobby Thompson slipped away. Hotel Dave, see if we can break off and just cruise the area. So we searched those two rooms. We searched all the common areas. Turned out that we missed Bobby by about five minutes. In Alaska, there's a lot of places to hide, especially if you have a support system. Bobby has a good support net here. He's got a lot of places to hide. Some we know, some we don't. And we burn them down as we know them. This place is done. The quicker we cut his support system, the quicker we'll have him in jail. We've put enough heat here, so now we've closed another door. Each time we close a door, it just makes it harder for him to find another one to get in. For the marshals, the search for Bobby Thompson continues. Meanwhile, in the western frontier of Alaska, 
Deputy Marshals Ladike and Cottle are searching for convicted sex offender Brian Laroe, believed to be armed and on the run somewhere near the village of Bethel. Okay. And then I've got down a brother. Is that another brother of his, too, then? Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Staying in Gray House by his dad? Okay. It just got information that he's down staying by his dad's place. Sounds okay. good. Sounds good. We're going out. We've got two police department officers ahead of us, kind of leading the way. They've said that they will um, shoot it out with officers and that they have AR-15s that they're not afraid to use. Need to take that seriously, for sure. In the Alaskan villages, locals survive by hunting, and most homes have a high-powered rifle, like the AR-15. It packs enough punch to drop a bear in its tracks or tear through a bulletproof vest. There's a lot of windows here. Get one of the ARs up on those. Sonny, you cover the back in case he goes for it. They approach, knowing a potentially armed fugitive could be inside with his finger on the trigger. Anybody's been living here for a while. Looks abandoned. We get quite a few cases involving him. He's known to flee from police, uh, whether it be a boat, snow machine, car, motorcycle. Um, he's threatened to kill cops. So he's not a very nice guy. Exactly why we need to get him in custody. Yeah. So that brown house is his dad's. He's not part of the, uh, I'll bring out the AR if you come to my door team. OK. All right, maybe you and I just go up and go talk to him. Hi, I'm Rochelle at Ike us Marshals, and we're looking for Brian. The Marshals typically question family members when looking for a fugitive. You've so. been out of town. How about his dad? Has his dad been around? They're trained to read body language, and even a lie can help betray a fugitive's location. That's not totally true, because I, I spoke with her the other day, just two days ago. Sensing that Brian is close, they decide to check out another location. We can always go check out the house of his friend. He's been seen down there lately. Down, down there in the greenhouse? Yeah. OK, all right. We'll head over to the greenhouse. Having hit several family homes, the marshals decide to investigate the home of Brian's close friend. The risks in approaching and entering any house is something the marshals know all too well. Two men are dead after a shooting in Elkins, including U.S. Deputy Marshal Derek Hudson Pillar. February 2011. 24-year-old Deputy U.S. Marshal Derek Hudsonpiller approaches a house in Elkins, West Virginia, looking for a wanted fugitive. Once inside, the suspect opens fire on the marshals, hitting Hudsonpiller in the neck. He would die that evening. Um, hey, Sonny, can you cover the back in case he tries to flee out the back? U.S. Marshals, where's Brian LaRoe? He's inside, he's inside. Brian? Brian LaRoe, U.S. Marshals. Brian, come out. Hey, open the shower curtain. Do it now, Brian. Open the shower curtain. Put your hands up now. Do not move. Get down on your knees, Brian. Get down Get on, on your knees. knees right now. Brian, you are under arrest. They got him. 
We got our guy. It definitely feels good to have him in custody. Nice job, guys. He's in custody now. We're taking him to the jail. And there's one less sex offender out on the street right now. We got him. That's the main thing. It's not up to us at this point to decide what happens. You know, he's, he's in jail, and our part's done. Okay, we got him where he belongs in jail, and let's head back to Anchorage and get started on the next case. While Odyke and Cottle start the long trip back, the task force in Anchorage begins the next case. Kyle Dwiggins is a 27-year-old repeat felon wanted for allegedly stealing over 100 grand from homeowners by promising to do renovations, then skipping town with the money. Is this a photo of the guy right here? Yeah, this is what they put in the paper. And, and so he and he's telling my source, I don't look nothing like the picture they put in the paper. I'm guessing that's because he weighs at least yeah. 100 pounds more. Dwiggins is not just big. He's a trained fighter, having competed and won as a mixed martial artist. But his MMA skills are only half the problem. And supposedly could have a firearm. One of the police reports says he has a gun. He told his mom on the 20th he has a gun and is looking forward to suicide by cop. Where'd you get that info? Oh, is it? Just got put in 1220. Okay. Suicide by cop, where an armed suspect with nothing to lose draws a gun on the marshals, making them shoot him. Suicide by cop, you never know what's going to happen. If the individual decides he wants to freak out and do something stupid, go for his gun, go for a knife, whatever, even if he doesn't have a weapon, he can present it in a manner, especially when it's dark, that we think he has a weapon and force us to open fire if we have to. And it's happened before. March 8, 2011, St. Louis, Missouri. Deputy Marshal John Perry approaches a house looking for fugitive Carlos Bowles. But Perry didn't know that Bowles had claimed he was, quote, only going out in a body bag. When Marshals entered the house, Bowles opened fire, killing Perry and wounding two others. The marshals yeah. have received a tip that Dwiggins will be meeting a friend in an Anchorage parking lot. We've got some pretty good information that he's going to meet somebody over by some restaurants in Midtown here, and we'll try to take him down then. We do have information that he recently purchased a gun and can't wait to do suicide by cop. And we've got some basic ideas. Could be a vehicle pinch like we enjoy doing. For the task force, the key to the takedown will be speed and surprise. If Dwiggins has a gun, they don't want to give him a chance to go for it. OK, I'm pulling into the parking lot now. There's almost no traffic in here. Very few vehicles. Right now, Dave's going to be the one calling the shots on this one. The marshals set up in four positions surrounding the alley. Far enough not to be spotted, but close enough to charge in and capture Dwiggins by surprise. I got somebody walking in the alley back here smoking a cigarette. I think that could be your guy. I don't know. He's walking behind the uh, restaurant there. Agreed, Dave. He looks pretty thin, though. Yeah, he does look thin. I'm pretty sure this guy's not thin, so if you don't think it's him, then... I uh, mean, yeah, this guy, I think, is close to 300 pounds. Okay, I'm being eyeballed real heavy by the guy who was walking down the uh, alley. Having your cover blown as a marshal is a huge risk. The suspect gains the upper hand to make the first move. Even though he looks a little thin, he's talking on the phone right now. And he is eyeballing me like nothing else. If they've been made, the marshals have no choice but to take him down now, even though they've lost the element of surprise. Oh, shit, this is him. U.S., you're going to get there first. Now, now. I think 
those guys. Just two. these things you set up a plan and then something weird happens that you didn't expect an individual that we had observed down early in our back alley turned out to be a lot larger than we thought he was from the distance in the dark you bet all's well everybody's safe nobody got hurt and uh now we can go home to our family so it's good the marshals have been after Bobby Thompson, a fugitive drug dealer with prior convictions for guns and narcotics. Recent surveillance is putting up the apartment of his girlfriend. So we know we're looking for his girlfriend that we know of. Anyway, here's what the place looks like. It's a beige two-story duplex. We're going to try and cover both north and southbound takeaway. You can tell by your map that the only way out is Haines Street. And now my pen decides to quit working. <laughs> Everybody understand the grand scheme of things? Excellent. And away we go. Everybody's right. on warrants, too. We're good. Copy, Jimmy. We're just now pulling into position. Okay. I'm not good with you. The snow's gotten a lot higher here. Yeah. This has been a banner year for snowfall so far. The crappy thing about the snow being this high is doing surveillance because it's like trying to look over the top of a wall. The marshals have the apartment surrounded at five strategic positions. They can cover all exits if Thompson tries to make an escape or charge in to make the arrest. Mama, she's in good shape. Here he goes over the berm. You're far more likely to get attacked by a moose than you are a bear. Mid surveillance entertainment for us. Those freaking moose, man, they'll charge they your ass. And then you think they can't jump and run, oh. but they can. Kind of some, uh, oh, trotting. He's coming to see you. I've seen him jump six foot fence. Dude, before. I saw a moose chasing down a freaking cop car out on the highway. Somebody. Motion at the window. Big. Yeah, that's B-mail. Okay. There's two shapes. There's another one right there in the window. That looks like Bobby. Yeah. The marshals spot a man matching Thompson's description. They decide to move in. Has been seen. And Kevin is ready. Okay. I'm in position for the alley. We are ready. 10-4. Dave's, uh... Taking off now. Go, all teams move in. All right, get ready. All right, go, 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 go. Don't get ahead of me. Don't get ahead of me. Coming in regardless. Come on out. Step out. Step out. Step out. Step out. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Don't you understand? U.S. Marshals, come downstairs now. For their own safety, the Marshals handcuff the occupants in the house until they can determine Thompson's whereabouts. Bobby, come downstairs. Do it now. 
Here we go. U.S. Marshals, Bobby Thompson, come down, do it now. Bobby, you're in here. Let's see your hands. He's not here, guys. Bobby is not here. None of the men inside turn out to be Thompson. Uh, well, all indicators told us that Bobby was here. Uh, we went in, we made entry, and uh, searched the house. Uh, Bobby's not in there, so we'll uh, regroup and move on. He knows that we're looking at this house now. He doesn't know when we're watching it, when we're not. He probably won't come back to this address. This is Alaska. It's a huge place, plenty of places to hide. He may go deep into hiding, but we're definitely burning down all the places he's got to stay. We may not have caught up with him tonight, but we'll get him. There's no question. The next morning, the task force regroups for the next case. Okay. Dutch Harbor. Wow, that's, uh, that's a pretty good ways out. I'll let you know as soon as I hear something. All right? The marshals are after Bakit Sebet, a fugitive wanted on charges related to a prior fraud. He hopped a fishing boat in Seattle that's now in Alaska waters. Hey, Mick. Hey, we got a good one. Well, this guy, I got a call from South Dakota for the marshal. He got on a fishing boat down in Seattle, and the fishing boat took off, and it's up here around Dutch Harbor. It's probably good we get him on the ship where he really doesn't have anywhere to go. Being a fish processing plant, it's going to have a lot of knives, a lot of different uh, sharp objects on there, I'm sure, and a lot of places to hide. So hopefully we can uh, swing in there and, and uh, snatch him up. No problem. We went out there to arrest somebody. You know, he's won it on a federal charge. So I have no idea what to expect. So I'm going to grab all the gear that I think I need. Deputy Marshals Dave Long and Mick Bunn are flying 1,100 kilometers west of Anchorage to the remote fishing port of Dutch Harbor, nestled along the desolate Aleutian Island chain. From here, they'll charter a boat for the trip to the Bering Sea. Just got here from Anchorage, Alaska, out to uh, Dutch Harbor. Got about four and a half, five hour boat ride out to the processing ship now where uh, our fugitive is supposed to be working. It looks like a pristine day today. We couldn't ask for better weather here. I think it's gonna suck when we get back, though. They said 80 mile an hour wind. So, Jimmer, yeah. how are you, sir? Carver. Young as ever. <laughs> Thanks for lying. Ready to rock and roll. Let's go. Let's go get our man. Let's go get him. With the assistance of boat captain Jimmer McDonald, the marshals begin their long journey into the Bering Sea on the hunt for a lone fugitive. Not many deputies can come out here and ride a boat out to get their fugitive out in the middle of the wilderness like this. Yeah. I assume he's going to be really surprised because I'm sure he didn't think that the marshals would come all this way to get him. Once we arrest him, we'll have him in chains around his belly and around his hands and there'll always be one of us at least you know probably both of us right here on him watching him Are there any weapons on the boat um i do have a 22 rifle in my bunk down here okay just so we know yeah that's, right. that's the only other weapon that's the only weapon okay. we can handle that no we have a uh, our, our weapons and we have a taser too we'll just keep him away from there just set him down there we can keep an eye on him and okay. make sure he behaves sounds good nick all right cool Because this guy's on the boat, doesn't mean you take it lightly. You still got to do it. You still got to take it uh, just like any other fugitive. Prepping for extreme weather and emergency survival is just part of the job for marshals in Alaska. This is a uh, survival suit in case I fall overboard. Five minutes in this water without anything on, your body will lock up. So uh, this suit will buy you some time.
For Marshall stationed in Alaska, fugitives could be anywhere, from the northernmost reaches of the Arctic Circle to the desolate end of the Aleutian Islands. And they need to be ready to cover the state to get their man. Let me see what time it is. I'd say we're probably another 30 minutes out. This is the guy we're going to go to get on the ship. This is the guy we're looking for, the side profile of him. There's no other state that a deputy will travel 10 hours, 12 hours to get to a fugitive and stay in the state. This is why I moved up here. Jimmer's going to pull up next to the ship. We're going to climb up the ladder. Well, I've got my taser, so unless he's got some kind of weapon in his hand, I'll probably I'll probably be the taser guy, and, and you can go ahead and uh, cuff him up. I just don't want him to uh, take off and us have to go search the ship locker to locker, you know, looking for this guy. He wouldn't be stupid. If he wants to be stupid, we'll put him in full restraints or put him behind his back, and we'll just we'll do something. Yeah. I'm guessing that's the ship right there, so let's go on down. They head below decks to mask their arrival. The key to the arrest will be to find their fugitive before word gets out that the marshals are on board. We're kind of hiding out down in a pilot house. You know, no sense in uh, parading out on the deck right now. Take a line, tie it, move it down. So as far as all the deck crew knows, it's just a boat that's coming alongside for some reason. They really don't know why we're coming up there. There are a lot of places to hide in a boat. There's a lot of engineering spaces. There's a lot of lockers. There's all kinds of hazards. Worst case scenario is he may have a knife. Or he may try to run like he did in the past. We got to do it quick and try to get to where he's at before he knows we're coming. Searching a ship for a fugitive is a daunting and dangerous task for law enforcement. Watch this uh, pipe. Get up early, get up here to the left. Watch here. Go that way. Here. We right and left. Bulkheads, passageways, and machinery mask a fugitive's movements. I got a, I got a forward space up here. here. Worse yet, a ship's interior provides perfect cover to hide from marshals. Or to stage an attack. Slick floor, Mick. Watch, watch your step. All right, clear. Laundry. Clear. Go upstairs. Clear in here. Clear up here. Dave, this one's clear. Couldn't have gone any better. We made an impression here, and now they know that we will come here and get them. We're gonna put a chains on him. Yeah, I'll put the chains on him. The complicated thing about this arrest was coming from Anchorage, 800 miles out here to Dutch Harbor, and then chartering a ship or a boat to take us out here to another ship, about a four and a half, five hour ride. So we come out here, arrested the subject, and now we got about a five-hour boat ride back in the pitch dark here. Sometimes it's not so much uh, catching a fugitive, it's the journey getting there. And this has got to be a testament to say, we're going to find you wherever you're at. We're going to come in and get you wherever you're at. There's nowhere you're going to hide, even in Alaska. As marshals Long and Bunn make their long trek back from Dutch Harbor, the team in Anchorage begins their next case. The task force is after Gerard Alexander, a known gang member who's believed to be armed and dangerous. He's wanted on charges related to a robbery conviction. An anonymous tip this morning puts the suspect in an Anchorage apartment. I want to get this right up front is he is uh, known to be carrying a firearm. 
So everybody definitely be cautious of that. He does have gang affiliations. He's a validated member. There may be others around when we take him. He's coming out, and we can positively ID this guy. Yeah, we're going to take him. Uh, remember, officer safety, you've probably got 200 years of experience in this room. So take care of your buddy. All right. <laughs> oh, you woke me back up again. We're dealing with a situation where the information that we get can change very quickly. So the most important thing for us to do is to get there before it does change. The team gears up and hits the street to stake out the suspect's apartment. You want to do a quick drive-by? Yeah, let's do it real quick and then see what we can see from the back side there. Let's see if we can find us a good place to sit here. This place looks good right up here. Let the waiting game commence. The marshals take three tactical positions around the apartment, able to spot anybody that comes or goes from any direction. Now, it takes kind of a special breed to work up here. Sitting out here, you know, 10, 12 hours, 20, 30 below, you can't leave the car running because your exhaust will give away your position. But, hey, that's just part of the game. That yellow cab looks like it's going right for our apartment. Yep. Show Bryson. Show Bryson. Go, Bryson. Looks like he's getting into the cab. I'm getting into a yellow cab. He's a yellow cab. Gerard is in the cab. He's moving. He's moving. Ten for Bryson. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and move in. He's picking up speed. I believe that's him in the passenger seat. Still heading westbound on Diamond at Old Seward Highway. He's going to run when we do this, so we're going to have to box it in. The key to taking down a dangerous suspect in a moving car is to strike with speed and cuff him before he can make a move. Kevin, you're first. Kevin copies. Everybody be careful. Beware of that firearm. All right, let's get up here. We'll wait till Kevin initiates. Here's one. I got it. We were able to ID our subject. We ended up tackling him into the snow, wrestling with the fugitive. He was non-compliant, still struggling against us, so he ended up being tased. Yeah, let's yeah, get let's him stood up. up. Yeah, let's get him up. Here we go. Right there, right there. Bad choice to run from the marshals, buddy. Yeah. Wait a minute. You've got a pocket full of Large wedge here in the pocket. There's something in this jacket pocket. I want to make sure that that's not a weapon. What's this in here? It don't look good for you, brother. Now is when I wish I had my gloves. I'm getting frostbite on my trigger finger. On his person, we found a large amount of heroin taken off the streets, a lot of drug money taken off the streets, and a dangerous fugitive is now in custody. No deputies hurt, no agents, no officers hurt. All a good night. We're going home safe. Nice work. You too. I'll tell you what, this has been a pretty exhaustive uh, fugitive investigation for uh, for Bobby Thompson. But I've got some information today. I think it's good. It's solid. We're going to head over there right now and set up on this place. And I believe we're going to get him today. I believe this is the day for us on him. Thompson is a fugitive drug dealer wanted on charges related to a narcotics conviction. He's considered armed and dangerous. The marshals have information that puts Thompson at a local house. I smell Bobby. He's here. Come on, Bobby. Hey, Kevin, we're looking down in the backside here. Sounds good. As boring as it is, sitting here is probably the best bet. We got all the exits covered. 
The marshals cover all points of entry or exit to the neighborhood. When Thompson exits the house, they'll strike with overwhelming force, never giving him a chance to flee or go for a weapon. Line on the other side. They pulled open. That closed immediately. Someone was looking up. That's Bobby. That is Bobby. Don't you're hiding. Alrighty. That means he is in there. That is awesome. I think you're right. Very nice. Bada bing. We just had a uh, silver pickup truck pull in right beside the Escalade. case scenario if we were to take down Bobby tonight and things went all wrong there could be a shootout and in the best case scenario we hit hard and fast we take Bobby by surprise nobody gets hurt bad guy gets arrested we all go home to our families we win that, that looked like Bobby closed that door well, we thought we saw Bobby's head in the door okay Bobby's coming out and he's getting in the silver pickup truck ready now 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 Yep, go, go. Ready? Yep, jump. U.S. Marshals, get out of the car now! Step out! Get out! Get out! Open the door! Get your hands up. Step out the vehicle, Bobby. Slowly get out. Very slowly with your hands in the air. All right, Bobby, slowly get out. Slowly step out of the vehicle. Keep your hands where I can see them. 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 Keep your hands Vehicle looks clear. Okay, he's cuffed. All right, all right. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, baby. Now he's jogging, you guys. Nice job. Good work. Good bueno. job. Way to bueno. Stay good. We got our guy. I'm a happy pig. You can't beat that with a stick. Good job, guys. He uh, gave us a run for our money, that's for sure. But at the end of the day, you know, this, this is what we do for a living. So you know, the, the odds are against him, not us. It's just a testament to the tenacity of these guys and to the U.S. Marshals. We're not going to quit. Yeah. We can finally go home and see our families. That's exactly awesome. right. Nice job, you guys. Nice job. Yeah. So now I finally get to go back home and see the wife and kids. It doesn't seem, I don't think they hardly know me right now. But the thing about it is, though, with fugitive hunting, it never ends. So, you know, come, uh, come Monday morning, I'm going to be right back in the office working on the next one.